my name is Maurice Washington. I want to welcome everybody to another episode of Executive Talk. Those that are watching on live TV and those that are watching on social media. Speaking of social media, please connect with us on YouTube, Twitter, or, or Facebook. Those are one of the three social media platforms that we can utilize in order to communicate with you. We prefer YouTube and also Facebook specifically because, again, communication comes a lot easier for us. So, again, why do we want to communicate? We want to communicate because you're going to end up asking a lot of questions when you're watching this program. You may know somebody that's actually going through something that we're talking about. You may have something that's going to just kind of ruffle your feathers. And all those things are okay. Because what makes it not okay is when we don't converse about it. We do not want to leave any of those thoughts or questions hanging. Because again, this is the most, more of an emotional show. This is a breakthrough show. This is an opportunity for, for you to find a breakthrough personally, so that way it can show up in your business. Now, Maurice, is this show for business owners? Primarily. However, it's gonna hit your employees also. Because we all go through something in this, in this world today. In this world today, we go through relationships. You're gonna meet some people, you're gonna smile, you're gonna try to, and sometimes you're gonna leave trying to figure out what just happened to me. You're gonna to go to work as an employee and figure out what's going on with my boss. What's going on with the person that I work with? Your, your boss is going to look at you and say, what's going on with my employees? What's going on with this? Why is everything so crazy? Well, there's answers, and all those answers we feel are in the Bible. So again, our job is to find those answers biblically so they can show up for you personally, so we can have that breakthrough. Because again, your business is nothing but an EIN. The amount of money that you make by the end of the year, next year, the following year, God willing, has nothing to do with your entry into heaven. It's about your spirit that you bring into you every day and that you're required to bring in through, uh, through, the, through the Lord. So that's what we're addressing. So I want to make sure that you also open up your heart. It's very easy to point out, oh, yeah, my boss is like that or my employees are like that. What about you? We've all had some stuff going on in our lives. It's just a different story. It just looks differently. Okay, some of us can really associate with each other. But again, what about you? So open up your hearts and let's open up our minds to what can be said. Because this is a breakthrough moment. For those who are struggling through this COVID, through some other situations in, our, in, in this world that we have today, there's some answers in this show. And so I want to invite you by opening up your heart and opening up your mind to what we have to talk about. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're in our second part of our series called Underdeveloped. As I alluded to in the very first part, what do you think about when you talk about or when you, when you hear the word underdeveloped? A lot of us don't think about development a lot. The world today that we're in says, let's get it done. Let's get it done today. Let's, let's have this thing created tomorrow so we can, start, so we can profit off of it. Okay, we, you know, we, we've come to say, let's think in abundance. Nothing wrong with thinking in abundance, but when you're thinking about abundance and you're underdeveloped, do they, go, do they go hand in hand? They conflict with each other, don't they? We go to church and we, we pray and we're doing, all, we're doing all the right things that we feel like we, we, should, we should be doing, but we're still struggling. Why is this word underdeveloped coming in now? Let's talk about it. Right here in Romans 8, 6 through 8, this is kind of picking up right where we left off from the last show. So I encourage you to, to, to watch that show so you can get up to speed. But I'll go ahead and cliff note version it for you. In the very first show, what we did is we talked about how God specifically in Genesis chapters 1 through 2, very specific about development. He never left anything underdeveloped. He didn't go and on the sixth day say, man, I feel like I forgot something. Oh, I got to go back to the third day and, you know, I got to go ahead and get the seed bearing fruit and get out all that all squared away before I go back to the seventh day and rest. He never went backwards. Everything God developed was, was clean. It was very good. And it's still systemic today. We still depend on it today. Because it was so, because it is so developed. How many of you guys go, go to bed and wake up expecting it not to be day? Well, guess what? If you're able to wake up today, 
Genesis, um, Genesis 1, 3, or yeah, 1, 1, 2 or 1, 3 states what, what today is, what that event was when you woke up. It's still here. It's still developed. In, in chapter 2, that's the development of mankind. In chapter 3, that was the fall, which left mankind at an underdeveloped level. It wasn't fully there. Now, let's talk about this development from a little bit further. How long was Adam and Eve in the garden? Truth is, I don't know that answer. I don't know who does, but if you do, you can go ahead and put it on Facebook or on YouTube. But guess what? They were developed probably for a very long time before the fall even happened. So for us, ultimately, was a, it was a, an experience that we have no knowledge of. But we chose a different knowledge which left us underdeveloped. That's where, that's where we are. So that's the climb of the cliff note version of the last show. But again, that always sets the stage. Now we go into this series right here. We're talking about the mind. The mind of the flesh is death. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. Because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Why is that important? Well... Going back to the last show, we're talking about when you're operating underdeveloped, when you're a young kid and you're trying to hurry up and become 18 and become that grown adult, you start quickening life. Because you start to actually realize how uncertain, how underdeveloped you may have been. There may be an emotion and there's some things that you didn't really understand. My, my people were destroyed because of lack of knowledge, and that's in Hosea. Well, that shows up. At a lot of moments of your life, there's an underdevelopment there. Now, one thing about life is you still have to make a choice at that very specific moment. You don't get a chance to, there's a lot of times you kind of think it through, but sometimes life presents a choice right there. But because of our lack of knowledge, because of our underdevelopment, we seem to continuously choose the wrong path. Well, what's going on? Our mind, our creative mind, that's operating through the flesh, Struggles is a, it's a habitual cycle of choosing the wrong component because of our underdevelopment. We have yet to understand what's good for us. That was a separation of life in the fall. We have yet to understand, because that's the underdeveloped part of us, what is quality? What is life? Why is God saying no? See, in the Bible, we look at God saying no as he's, he's really mean. He's really just trying to take the rest of everything from us. The enemy has made sure that a seed was planted that, and is speaking to our underdevelopment that, no, I'll give it to you now. So that's the hostility that we're talking about when we talk about this scripture and where we left off last, last time. So let's keep going fast forward. And underdevelopment, all these areas are compromised. I have this as number one up here is the heart, because as long as the heart is underdeveloped, everything else will be underdeveloped. It does not take much for, for a person to make a bad decision, because all your bad decisions come from underdevelopment. Let's go ahead and get real right to the root of it. It come from underdevelopment. There is something missing here. There's an understanding missing here. That's allowing the mind to say, well, that's good for me, regardless. Mind of the flesh is hostile. So the eyes, the way that you see life, the way that you see certain circumstances that are right in front of you, you see them differently. Because the mind of the flesh is going to say, no, this is what we see. Okay, and why do I have the feet? Not to look at feet, but it's, those are your actions. That's your next move that you're about to make into your life. Underdevelopment does not allow you to make any good, solid de decisions. You always come back to this, oh, shoot, what did I do that for? Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Okay, because a lot of us don't take the Bible seriously. And a lot of us don't know how to apply it today. So specifically, all these areas of compromise. That becomes your whole personal being every single day when you're operating through underdevelopment. So let's talk about insecurity. Now that's a new, that's a word that we're used to saying. We're used to pointing people out. We can watch Jerry Springer or we can watch all kinds of other shows and say, 
yeah, those people are insecure. You may have some of your own specific insecurity going on. And let's look at the definition. It's a feeling of general unease or nervousness that may be triggered by perceiving of oneself to be vulnerable or inferior in some way, or a sense of vulnerability or instability which threatens one's self-image or ego. I want you to think about this definition. It's, it's actually very loaded. How often do you really look at the definition? You know the word, but how often do you look at the definition? And let's get right to the end. The self-image or ego, the pride. So if your mind is governed by the flesh and, it's, and you're finding strength in your pride because your spirit is, is underdeveloped, well, you're, you feel threatened all the time, don't you? Based on the definition. And guess what? A sense of... You have a sense of it, a sense of vulnerability or instability. Okay? Remember our show before, security is one of the most important things to mankind. So underdevelopment allows for insecurity. So it is a word, but there's an underdevelopment that actually means more. And that's what we're not pointing to. That's what we're not praying about. So it becomes an insecurity on earth, and this is how we look at this. This is how we go into earth. When we're 18, 19, it just kind of continuously shows up in our adulthood. Okay? So think about that. Don't forget this definition. This is huge. So then this is the way that I address the world. This is my, this, if I'm feeling this insecurity, if I'm operating if all these areas are compromised, if I feel under development, this is how I address the world. This is what I bring into the world. Okay, this is what you mean. See this darkness, this hallway? That's how you feel daily. When you wake up with that perpetual feeling, oh shoot, what's going to happen to me now? Or you try to force yourself to be positive. So that means you're trying to trick yourself out of the darkness. That insecurity, that underdevelopment is still there. And so when you go into the world, you're operating from this level. So as we talked about in the very first show, we talked about the Jones. Well, let's talk about your marriage. Let's talk about these relationships that you're in. Have you had some struggles in them? You might be struggling with that person's insecurity or underdevelopment. They're not going to sit here and tell you, you know what? I feel very underdeveloped. This is what I'm going through. That would be a beautiful, honest conversation. But how often does that happen? It doesn't happen a lot, does it? No. This is, as you're raising children, if you're operating under that underdevelopment, this is what they see, whether you know it or not. So this is what the world sees. This is how you address the world. You feel like the world is after you because of insecurity is a vulnerability or instability which threatens oneself. Perceiving, okay? See, to be vulnerable or inferior in some way. So if you walk around the world like that, that's your presentation. This is your input and the output into the world. This is how you receive it, and this is what you give to it. It becomes a battlefield. Because nothing from the spirit can actually operate from that high level. You have to actually make sure that you're operating on the level that you're currently in. And this is that, this is that level of unhealedness. When you haven't truly healed from what you're going through. This is the only, only thing that you have left to give. So self-righteousness will be all you have left to get through the day. Okay? The Lord says, no, God, no false gods before me. Well, Lord, I'm not serving anything else, but you're serving yourself. You're, you, you may be the false God before God right now that he's talking about. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, Maurice, that's, that's a little intense. Well, if I, if I have a feeling of general unease or nervousness that may be triggered by perceiving oneself to be vulnerable, what else am I going to do? I got to find strength from somewhere. I have to. I have to get through the day. I have to make sure that you don't hurt me. I have to make sure. And that's, what, that's how people become over-consumed with themselves. 
it's a perpetual feeling because you have to think about yourself often and make sure I'm doing well or is it fitting me? Okay, so you're starting to act from the flesh. Your mind is going on overdrive because it's connected where? It's connected with the flesh. And that's all you know. That's all you're perceiving. In Jer Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9, 23, it says, this is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong man in his strength, nor the wealthy man in his riches. Now, that's a very good scripture. It makes a lot of sense. But how would the enemy make sure that you manipulate that scripture, especially in your underdevelopment, in your self-righteousness, in your insecurity? Remember, the enemy is a destroyer. When we think about the enemy destroying, we probably think it's some kind of real huge assassination. Well, it is. But it's a spiritual assassination. He wants to make sure that you become dysfunctional. So, why did I bring the scripture up? What do you think you're going to do opposite of this? You're going to boast in your own wisdom. Well, I know this, I know this, I know this. Nor the strong man in his strength. Well, look how strong I am or how much money that I have. You start to boast about these things because, again, it's starting to create, it's starting to create a reality for you. It makes up the difference from the underdevelopment that you're feeling spiritually or um, from, from within, from your heart, from your emotions. Okay, again, the flesh is very deceiving and it will send you into places that you don't want to go. It's going to do opposite of everything. So in these scriptures, it's going to make sure, the enemy is going to make sure you do opposite of everything that the Lord is asking you to do or not to do. He's going to make sure that you do it opposite. And that's how you know you're living a lie. But you don't know that when you're underdeveloped. Okay? Now, this is the next phase. This is the leader you become. Because again, I'll throw myself under the bus, if you will. In my abandonment, I still chose to become a business owner. I was this dude right here who, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a smart guy. You know, I can't believe, you know, my dad didn't use his wisdom or my mother and all this other stuff that I created in my mind. So I'm going to use mine because I feel like I'm a pretty smart guy for my age. You know, I work out, I'm strong and, you know, I need to get rich, you know, whatever. Right. So, of course, that's that was my mindset. But that was the leader I became. All I had was my brain activity, how wise I thought I was the way that I perceived the world, that it was always after me. That I couldn't trust anybody except for myself. But the truth is, I couldn't trust myself, right? But I blamed everybody else. And so my actions followed suit. But that was kind of the leader I became. That's all I had to offer in this situation. But how often are we business owners not dealing with this, with this? With this. So, what type of relationships do you think you will develop? Let's take a guess. Have you ever said the law of attraction? Well, okay. It's very easy to come on and get ready for the day, smile, and make sure you shake hands and make sure you meet new clients or meet people and really put on a good stage. Make, make sure that you put on a good presentation for everybody. But all the while, you're, all, you're not going to sit up here and try to find people emotionally light. It would not make sense. It would actually disrupt your whole well-being. Because there's a level emotionally, if you feel dark, if you're spiritually dark, where well, you're going to find like-minded people. That's the most craziest statement to me that I learned. Now, I want to be around like-minded people. Well, that was my issue. <laughs> I kept on finding like-minded people, and I was just as dark as them. What was that for? But that's all you have. These are the relationships that you will develop. Relationships that are just as dark and that have the same world out view or view that you have. So this type of leader will search for others that are under the same darkness, as I mentioned. Okay, it's not hard to find either. You'll find how comfortable you are in this world when you're under, under that place of underdevelopment or insecurity. 
I realized early in my life that I had a ton of friends. It's like, wow, I got, I'm pretty popular, you know, and I had a ton of friends. Well, when I, as I got older, as I, as I became developed, I realized, no, they just matched my emotion at the time. That's all I, that's all I had. But that's how life starts to happen. When you start to actually start to percolate in life and start to move through, you're only, you can only find for this is the same darkness as what you're attracted to. It becomes, again, a habitual thing. How does a mind that's hostile to God create? I want you to think about that for a minute. It's hostile. Okay? Well, first of all, it's got to think about who first. In order for this type of leader to lead, he or she must oppress the environment, which ultimately under, underdevelops the environment. Let that sink in for a minute. Have to oppress the environment, which ultimately underdevelops the environment. So what does that mean? So that means if, I need to, if I'm operating for this, I'm hostile to God. In my mind, I'm trying to figure out how to create. I have to make sure that I always remain supreme. That everybody respects me. That anybody that I hire respects me and follows me no matter what. Just follow my words, but don't have to worry about my actions. Okay? It's an oppression. When we, when we talk about oppressive people, you know, we can say, well, they're mean or whatever the case may be. But it's, it's an emotional oppression that, again, I remain supreme. That's how this works here. This is kind of the first energy that I'm creating. In this oppressive environment, if you guys can notice the slide here, we have this heart just the level of above both of these other hearts. Now, why is that important? Because again, I need to remain supreme. I need to make sure that if I hire you, you're going to not buckle, not buck the system with me, not ask me any questions. And if you do, you know, I may create some things to make sure. And what, what are those things I may create? What are some of the characteristics that I may do? I may have fits of rage. Now, what, what does that mean? When I first meet you and I shake your hand and I'm smiling and for the first three months, we are the best of friends. But then one day I come in, I'm just upset. What does that do to you specifically? He like, oh, no, uh, you know, I don't want to see you upset. You know, how can I help you? Oh, no, you can't help me. But maybe you can. So then I get better for a while, and then all of a sudden I'm mad again. I'm actually changing your emotions. I'm keeping you off balance because there's no security all of a sudden. Because now you don't know who I am and who I'm going to consistently be. Unorganized and thought and action. A true symptom of an oppressive person or underdeveloped person, you're always going to find unorganized and thought and action. It's not going to follow a, a specific pattern, but it's only a pattern that's specific to, to myself. Competition is huge for me. Because in selfish ambition, selfish ambition when you think about the acts of the flesh and if your mind is governed by the flesh, well, I'm going to be very competitive. Now, Maurice, are you not competitive? Anybody that knows me, I'm absolutely competitive. You want to go bowl? Let's go bowl. I'm going to try to beat your butt. Okay, let's just be real about that. But ultimately, but that, does that make the person who I am? No. But in competition, it create, there's a level of competition where you can't separate yourself from the moment. Where, yes, that was good competition, but guess what? We, we made it through, whatever. But if that becomes you're just competitive to make sure that you're number one and that's it, where you're operating from a different under, underdeveloped place. Uncertainty. Yeah, true. We're not, we're not certain about tomorrow. We have no clue. But uncertainty becomes, if that is always my perpetual place, well, guess what? There's an underdevelopment there because I'm supposed to be leaning on God. 
Now, ineffective communication. Again, I cannot wait until we get into the communication one. Now, I probably regret saying that because it's probably going to be a deep conversation. So whatever. But ineffective communication. Just because I communicate, am I effectively getting the message across as a leader or as an employee? But under development makes you miss a couple of things. Environments like this must create an unhealthy dependency on them. An unhealthy one. There's nothing wrong with dependency. It's probably one of the highest levels of places that you can be in life. But if it's unhealthy, then that means you're in a place of idolatry or an oppression. Okay? And then, again, ultimately, because the root of it is an underdevelopment for me personally. This environment is untrustworthy. You can't trust your environment. That, that's the true symptom of underdevelopment running the environment. When the lawless, it's, it's, it's interesting. When the lawless tries to create procedures for the office space, it's very hypocritical. Okay, it becomes a Pharisee type spirit. Okay, and look at it in the, in the Bible, it says, woe to the Pharisees. But this is what happens. You try to create pro, uh, procedures for the office space that are flexible. They are flexible for you to wiggle in and not for your employees to wiggle in. Okay, that is, again, a symptom of this oppressive environment. And underdeveloped offices do not provide an example. They make sure that you just kind of go out there and figure it out and then get mad at you with fits of rage if you don't do it right. There must be an example from leadership if that's what the case is. What the case is. But underdeveloped can't leave a, a good example. The overall environment is unhealthy. Again, take this in. We are developing. <laughs> This is the opposite of this show. And in our next show, we are going to address this development, and we're going to actually see how in the office space it starts to trigger everything else, trigger actions. But underdeveloped is where we're going with this. Okay? An unhealthy environment is not what you're looking for, but that is a symptom of being underdeveloped. That is a symptom of the enemy creating a course and a pathway for himself for destruction but using you to actually create this. Hope you really take the show to heart. Connect with us on social media. We need you. We need to hear what you have to say. But in the meantime, I actually have to get back to work. So you guys have a wonderful, great day. Talk to you later.